You know, recently the distinguished scientist uh, Stephen Hawking said that uh, gravity may have caused the universe to come into existence. And uh, as, a, as a philosopher, I'm puzzled sometimes by what scientists say about causality as it relates to this field of quantum mechanics. To help us kind of uh, work through this topic, Dr. Darren Williams is with us. He is a physical chemist, a professor, uh, and a Christian thinker. Uh, Darren, how do we sort through this? I mean, as a non-scientist, Sometimes when I read or hear what scientists say, they give me the implication, and maybe I'm drawing the wrong inference, mm -hmm. but it seems like they're implying that quantum mechanics takes causality or traditional causality out of the picture, that things can kind of pop into existence from nothing, if you will. Yes, a, a lot of noise has been raised mm -hmm. over this idea that things can pop into existence from nothing. Uh, this was a really big part of Lawrence Krauss and William Lane Craig's debate right. in Australia. And he was uh, frankly equivocating on the word nothing. And, and there's some great analysis of that debate that you can find online. But, but one piece of evidence that is demonstrable that you can detect in the lab is this idea that you can get uh, matter, antimatter particle pairs uh, in the quantum vacuum. So these fluctuations in the quantum vacuum, you will see now these two particles pop into existence mm. and last for a few milliseconds, or probably that's way too long, probably picoseconds, and then annihilate each other. Wow. So they say, look, something came from nothing. But they're not using nothing in an accurate way. Uh, if you think about that annihilation reaction, we use that in positron emission tomography. So when you go in to get a PET scan, you're given a chemical that goes through your body and it is an unstable chemical and it will emit positrons, positive electrons. This is antimatter that we're using as a medical application. It's fascinating. But as soon as that positron finds an electron and all of the molecules in your body have plenty of electrons, they annihilate each other and produce two gamma rays that are simultaneously produced and go in opposite directions. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of this technique because you have a ring of detectors around your body and the computer can discriminate. If two detectors don't fire at the same time, it wasn't from your body. It was just noise. And so it's really almost a zero background technique. The computer can listen for simultaneous signals and it can map out your brain or wherever the, the uh, area of interest is. If you think about that, <clears throat> That's, if you take those same gamma rays and run this reaction backwards, you have energy, two light photons, producing particles that have mass. And so that's when they're saying nothing, they're saying no mass. Okay. There's plenty of energy. And so where did they get the energy? So that's the equivocation. When they say that something comes from nothing, they're, they're, they're equivocating. Nothing in their case is no mass. Okay. But where'd the energy come from? Let me ask you another question. I remember giving a talk about the, the law of non-contradiction. Okay. And there was a physicist in the audience, and he, during the question and answer period, said, uh, doesn't quantum mechanics kind of run against the law of non-contradiction in that, you know, light can appear as a wave and a particle? And the law of non-contradiction says nothing can be A and non-A, my thought to that was, um, it seems to me that the wave particle, they appear under different experimental conditions. Am I, am I even close to being correct yes, there? Yes, I think you're on the right track. That uh, Saying that something can appear as a particle or appear as a wave is probably more accurate to say described as. So uh, an electron can be described with a wave equation. It can also be described as a microscopic point charge, mm. like a billiard ball. And, and there's advantages in some experiments, like the photoelectric effect, to treat it like a billiard ball. And there's advantages of diffraction to treat it like a wave. And, and so it's really mathematically, you can treat it either way. But then they layer on what we would call you know, ontological language and say yeah, it yes. is both a particle and a wave. And that's where I think that the problems arise. Okay, thank you.